the one thing my dad said was like, oh, that's, you can't, it's not an airplane. You can't hear anything. And so we're looking at it. It split into two lights. The two lights disappeared and then four lights appeared in the particular period of time where I think both of us were really into meditative things. Oh, wait. So when I saw this thing, we were super spiritual, not spiritual, didn't see anything. And now I'm back to being spiritual. And here it goes. I'm like asking for this to show up and I'm trail running by myself. And I'm like, what the is that? Okay, crazy. So I don't know. I feel like that would be the worst that would happen. You know, I'd give everyone so much clarity and maybe they don't want people to have clarity and direction um, and just keep it so chaotic and, you know, not let people really understand what, what this life is really about. And right now there's so much chaos in the U.S. political realm. I don't think we're going to get the answers that a lot of us think or we're hoping to get. Like, no one is here to see this with me. Like, I have no proof. The one time by myself, and I usually run with people because I'm afraid of running by myself in the trail just for, you know, safety issues. But that one day I was out there and I'm like, this is insane. It just happens like, ugh, you know. The following is a conversation with Dr. Jess Mina Garcia. Jess is from Los Angeles, United States. She is a board certified orthopedic clinical physiotherapist. Alongside her profession, Jess is an ultra marathoner who experienced a transformative phenomena at age 14, sparking a profound inner change. In recent years, she has cultivated a deep interest in higher consciousness, spirituality, and their connection to the UAP. When she's not aiding patients in their rehabilitation journey or advocating for outdoor connection, Jess delves into researching and spiritual intricacies of the UAP field. Her mission is to combat ridicule surrounding this topic by openly sharing her experiences. Jess is a fascinating lady, energetic, spiritual and open, and it was a real pleasure and honour that she trusted Tom and I to speak about her experiences for the first time on camera here. So the following is our conversation with Dr. Jess Mina Garcia. If it's okay, I'd like to just jump in with the first question, and that is really what first piqued your interest in the UFO UAP subject? Where did it start? Um, it started in 2003 with my first experience with my dad um, of witnessing a UAP in Central America. Um, and yeah, that's kind of was the catalyst for me. And I actually didn't know that my father had been pretty interested in these things because he's had a long history of experiences when he was younger. Um, and I think until I started experiencing it, he was really open to talk to me about it. And yeah, so I've been, I've been around the topic since I've been 14. And I just something I never talked about with anybody because it's always been such a ridiculed um, topic for such a long time. So I'm really happy that things are shifting a lot. But even now, you know, I test the waters with some people because if they crack a joke and they try to be funny about it, then I'm like, okay, I'm not going to talk to you about it. So um, I'm really happy with the community that's been built. And I have people that I can talk to about it who really are very seriously inquisitive and curious and open-minded about the topic. Fantastic. What was your, if you don't mind, what was your sort of experience with with your your father? So you said it was you're around sort of fourteen years old. Would you be able to talk us through? Yeah, I was fourteen years old. We uh, my parents are from Central America, El Salvador. So this was the first time we traveled there um, to visit their hometown, which is a very at the time was a underdeveloped town. So no running water, no electricity, dirt paths, the whole like tropical, like tropical forest kind of thing. And um, we had. We had, we had been there for about a few days and we were outside. It wasn't even dusk yet. So it wasn't dark at all. It was maybe the sun was going to set. It was later on in the day. We were outside and we saw, I mean, a huge, the only way I could describe it is a huge light. And I was like, what is that? It's, I guess the best way I could describe it now, if I had anything to compare it to would be if you're out in, at night and you see a helicopter pointing its lights at you, but you can't see past the light. So, um, and I was like, that 
it's interesting. So I remember being the first one to notice it. And my dad and my mom, my mom was there and she's always been very, now I know, very anti the topic. So she just kind of aloof walked away. And my dad and I are staring at it. And it's so it's tropical because you can hear birds and all these things. But the one thing my dad said was like, oh, that's you can't it's not an airplane. You can't hear anything. And so we're looking at it. And then in that moment, it split into two lights. And then we're looking and we're like, my dad's like, it's, you know, he's excited. Like it's UFOs. And I'm like, what? And um, the two lights disappeared and then four lights appeared. So they were in a line like this, as you can see my fingers. And so some would disappear and then they would turn and then go into a shape, into a square. And then some would disappear and then you just see two lights and then more would appear. And so it was like this dance. It didn't, it didn't, at the time, it seemed like a long time, but I don't think so because I remember staring, getting really scared. My dad stayed outside and I went inside the house, but I still looked at them from the window. So I was watching them for maybe a few minutes and then they just disappeared. So there was no noise, there was no shake. You couldn't see anything behind it. So that's the other curious thing. And this is 2003. So I would want to say they were, you know, like drones, but there was nobody in El Salvador at that time where we live who would afford drones. Um, and it's just not, I mean, the the closest um, like airport there is San Salvador, which is about an hour drive out. Um, and that's the only airport that come that allows traffic in and out. Even now, I don't think there are private um, like air, airports there in that area. So that was the first experience I had. And since then, I've been like staring at the sky. And not until recently have I seen things. Um, but yeah, so my dad has always talked about when he would grow up that his grandma, not my, my grandma, his mom would talk about things that they would see and talked about uh, his experience, which uh, I can talk to, I, I can talk about later. And how I think everyone in his family were very used to these kinds of things. So, which is really interesting because they were a very big agnostic family um, in an unusual time where it's a very heavy, heavy Catholic uh, country. So uh, that piqued my interest as I got older and I started exploring and asking questions and trying to make sense of it um, because that really changed my perspective on a lot of things um, as a young person. and yeah, kind of, kind of catalysted me into being really, really uh, inquisitive and questioning a lot of things. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. So if you don't mind me asking, um, well, that reminded me of something, first of all, actually. So, so Ryan Graves, the, um, the F-18 pilot that's been in, in the, in the news a lot, he said that that pattern is, is something they observed when they were catching them all on the radar, where the gimbal came from. And that was the, the racetrack pattern yeah. he, he referred to it as. Uh, but what, what color was the light, Jess? It was white. It wasn't anything. Um, like, I don't remember. I've heard, I I mean, I've read on the stuff. It's like when people talk about different colors, but it, no, it was just a white, bright, really bright light, white light. Um, there's no hues to it that I remember. I think the most striking thing was just like the unusual movement patterns of it. And it really just looked like the lights would disappear out of thin air and just reappear out of nowhere. And you're like, what? What, what, there's nothing there. It would just disappear. And there's, there's no residual item there that you would expect. Like, 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 turn, turn on, like they say it's a helicopter and the lights were off. Like, okay, expect to see something right there. And I think that's the biggest thing that kind of stuck out. I mean, I'm like, Ooh, what is this? So yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Did, did you get any kind of feeling for if they were sort of showing off or if they were just mooching around in you know like randomly or or what what was your feelings i i don't know i so i'm comparing that now i'm reflecting as an adult right because i've seen i've had a few unusual encounters and i now the feeling that i get is a play like i feel like it's mocking in a way like hey we're here you don't believe it but i'm gonna show you and then boom disappear and you're like wait 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 I didn't even get this on video. It's all, it's very, <laughs> it's really interesting. And um, I mean, back in, in that time, we didn't have cell phones. I didn't have a cell phone. I think we had a razor flip phone. 
um, and we had the, you know, disposable camera. So there wasn't something you could just pull out. That's why I think it was there for a longer period of time, because now I hear people like it happened so fast. I couldn't, you know, whatever. I got to distract and cook my phone and I'm, it was there for a few minutes. And so it's funny because um, I talk about it a lot now with my dad and we always bring that up. And um, I think we're just trying to figure out why it's, we saw it that one time in the particular period of time where I think both of us were really into meditative things. And I didn't know that it was meditation at the time that my dad would make me do with him. I mean, he invited me and I was like, yeah, let's do it. You know? And, uh, after that, when we stopped seeing things, it's like, we just stopped doing those things and we just never sensed anything. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting because you can tell even now when I ask him and I press about things that have happened to him when he was younger, he's still very like, mm, but it happened a long time ago. Maybe I was crazy. And I'm like, I was there with you when I saw it. We are not crazy. So, um, and I think part of it, my mom, since she's really religious, they think of it as a very evil and um, like, you don't talk about it, that's bad. And I see it completely different. So I'm trying to get everyone on the same page so they're comfortable talking about it. I would have thought by now would have, you know, broken him a little bit to feel more comfortable talking about it. But there's still like this stigma. I think he's been raised that way his whole life to never talk about it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Fascinates him. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so so where's where's your head at with it? As a phenomena, then obviously you're not as sort of um, from the same background as your mum. But do you do you feel it's a sort of a positive thing or a completely neutral thing or or what? What what? Where's your heart? At? I think I think it's a very positive thing. So I feel even now I'm like I don't know how deep I want to go into this because I don't know how. I mean I know you guys are open minded about it. Hmm. Um, I think it's a very positive thing. And I think my view on it has changed a lot. I used to think it's like, you know, like little gray aliens and flying saucers. That's just what it is. And I don't think it's just that anymore. I think that there's something much more complex and deep about it. Um, and just kind of reading a lot of things with other experiences that people have had. I'm like, it's really interesting that a lot of people who are in tune with this other energy are are see these things and it's from all walks of life of all types of spirituality or whatever you want to call it or practice and so i think it's something much more deep than the technological thing which is hard for me to accept because i'm in healthcare i've always been very like facts you need pictures i need data i need all these things but there's also something you can't deny that there is this other thing that is associated to it. Um, and the reason why I say that is when we had this encounter, I um, mean, my dad, we would meditate. Like now I notice the um uh, sound. So really deep humming. We mm -hmm. would do that every night. And he, I don't know what it is. I've tried to, I try to find it. He would do it and hold a, this is going to sound crazy. I mean, I always tell myself, this is going to sound crazy. He would hold like a golden triangle in his hand, like a pyramid. And he would hum for like, I mean, until we all fell asleep. And, um, and this is the summer leading into, cause we would go in the summer when we were on summer break for school. And when I saw the UAP, it actually turned me completely different where I didn't believe in anything like almost atheistic and didn't believe in anything. And so I, I was chasing this thing. Like, I want to see this thing, you know, there's gotta be, you know, something that's beyond maybe it's some weird technology. Maybe it's this like you know, develop super race and I'm going to find it scientifically. And so I focused on so many of that aspect that I just kind of forgot everything that we had practiced, never saw anything until recently, about a year ago, when I finally had like, you know, like, what's the purpose of life? Why am I here? Kind of those kind of thoughts. And you start, you know, tapping into this other thing. And here I go, start seeing and feeling things again. And I'm like, oh, wait. So when I saw this thing, we were super spiritual not spiritual, didn't see anything. And now I'm back to being spiritual. And here it goes. I'm like asking for this to show up and I'm trail running by myself. And I'm like, what the, is that? Okay, crazy. So that really changed everything for me. So my perspective 
for it is changed. And I, I, I still think that there's something objective to see. And, you know, obviously there's, you know, very intelligent people who are seeing these things and I do value that portion of it. But I also think that there's this whole other thing that no one's ever going to understand because it's not just that. So that's where I'm at about it. So now I'm like, I feel like my whole aura has changed a lot. And by that, I mean, just attitude about things and how little we know about life. And we just, I don't think we're ever going to really understand it until everyone kind of is open to that whole world of the the part of the phenomena. Yeah. So, yeah. It's fascinating. I, I had this. I had this conversation with with um with Tom. I'm sure you you won't mind me sort of mentioning it when. Absolutely. Oh, I want to hear <laughs> when I was um when I was I was I wanted to see something. You know, I, I'm deep into this subject, and I haven't I hadn't seen anything that I couldn't apply some kind of a conventional explanation to. But I I know there is something. I believe there is something out there. And I had this conversation with Tom and Tom's like, what you need to do is, you know, he kind of gave me some advice and some some tips on on what's worked for for him. And one of those things was this kind of this sound, it's almost like a hum sound. I think Tom, you you described it as a was it 40 megahertz or something like that? Was it am I saying that? Yeah. So I um I because I'm sort of the weird friend for a lot of my other mates, uh, my most little normal friends, um, I get asked how to meditate quite a lot and and people think that it's sort of this weird like magician thing that you go into so the way i've got them into understanding it is to listen to a tone like a single tone like 40 hertz so obviously you know that from the ohm sound or or something like that but the, an easy way for people to understand it because it's the same mechanism is like to listen through headphones to something like 40 hertz and just match your breathing to it and then you kind of start to tune yourself in and get into in the zone and, and i think that sort of opens you up to this beyond yeah. science you know so yeah i mean it's crazy because again it's oh my god i I, I, I'm trying not to say I sound crazy because I'm so used to like when I want to talk to somebody. You don't like, sound crazy at all. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, I know it sounds fucking crazy. Can I say that for it? I don't know. It sounds <laughs> fucking crazy. But this is like, um, and yeah, so I've gone into like weird and I'm a pretty like, I don't know if I have like, um, I've always had a concentration problem. Like even with learning, just like, I can't like get myself set up. I'm always thinking about things. Blah, blah, blah. I do a hundred things even in life now. Like I'm involved with a hundred things, but I do find it interesting that when it comes to like meditation, I mean, I almost get scared because I feel like I'm going to trip out pretty bad. And I'm like, I'm not even on drugs right now. And I feel like I'm going to go into this weird place. And I'm like, don't let go. Cause you're going to let go. You're not going to come back. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I don't know what it is. I, I, maybe it's been a, and I talked about it today. I was like, I hope I talk about this, but I, I do want to say I've always had this unusual pull, pull to this area as much as I've wanted to avoid it. And so even when, um, I kind of pulled away from like the spiritual sense of life, I'm like, there's something was always telling me like, you got, it's there. Don't deny it. If you deny it, you don't deny it. Don't deny it. It's there. It's there. It's there. So I've always had that sense of like okay it's there but is it real is it not because I think as as all of us right we just kind of want proof and um yeah and it's been a, a, an interesting journey but now that I'm doing this too even my dad kind of he's kind of into it too he's just going back to meditating he sent me videos of stuff that he's seeing and and I'm like yeah this is I'm telling you, it's, it's a real thing but um, and then I ended up reading Dan, uh, uh, Pazulka's books, and I thought that kind of verified things for me. Then I read Chris Bledsoe's book, and I was like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and I've tapped with Dolores Can. Dolores Can is a little bit hard for me because I really respect her, but I'm like, is this, this is like next level, you know, interviews with people. And, but a lot of what is said, it's like the same reoccurring thing are being said over and over and over again and from multiple people. And so I, I, I don't know, I, I feel like that's kind of the kookier stuff that people don't want to listen to, but I'm like, I don't know you guys, how many, how many more thousands of people, hundreds of people need to talk about it for, to be a thing. So to me, it just verified like kind of what I alluded to before is it's not just a physical thing that you're seeing there's something else attached to it 
and we do not comprehend it at all because we just can't comprehend it. Um, but I'm trying to really, really bad. <laughs> trying to go into this trance of like, I get you. I'm not afraid to send me some more signs so I can un understand and comprehend exactly what I'm, what I need to just accept. And I don't know. I, it's a, it's a very interesting um, thing of, you know, like even last year was the first time I experienced like odd dreams that I've never had before. And again, I'm questioning myself, like, am I because I'm reading all these things? I mean, I'm talking like, I have a, a sleep journal, a dream journal now, because they've been so vivid. Um, and I remember I went, I looked through the journal the other day and it was run from January, 2023. And it was, I drew a picture of this thing, like this being thing. And the quote said, why do you want to meet us so bad? And that's what I wrote. And I'm like, that's weird. I don't even remember writing this. So I showed it to my husband. He's like, you're just reading too much. And I'm like, no, I wrote this at like four in the morning when I woke up and I don't remember writing it. So again, like weird stuff like that. Um, when I first started uh, back into meditation, I kept hearing things in the house. Like at three and four in the morning, I would wake up and my husband's like, what's that? Someone's in the house. And I'm like, there's someone running in the house. And he's like, no, there's no one's in the house. And I'm like, there's someone running in the house. So I would hear it over and over and over again. Um, things like that. I had my first sleep paralysis thing that happened in Sacramento when I was away from home. I mean, I'm talking weird stuff. And I'm like, this is all of a sudden happening when I'm going back to these things. And so I think I'm, maybe I'm just more open to it. Again, this is probably, this is probably the first time I ever said that out loud. Um, but I think it's just, you know, I don't know. I'm sure other people experience it, but I think it is unusual that now I'm maybe a little bit more aware of these things and, you know, I'm trying to understand it, but uh, I feel for all those people who maybe still are afraid to talk about it. Uh, but I'm really happy that there's a community because I guarantee you there are way more people who have experienced things that probably have never said anything, you know? So. Mm, yeah. It seems like the more you kind of look outside, the less you see. And then when you, from your experience, once you stopped and you start going back inside, that's when it kind of opens up and you actually see what's there kind of thing. Yeah. And I knew the, okay. The one thing that actually convinced my husband, because my husband, I love him to death, but he's so like, not about it. He's just a very like one plus one equals two. You mm -hmm. know that, right? You know, um, our neighbor, um, I've never spoken to him. Um, and we've lived by, with each other for two years now. And, and my husband's like, Hey, uh, our neighbor wants to talk to you. And I'm like, mm, what? And he's like, hey, I just want to let you guys know if you guys are ever freaked out because I'm outside your garage, it's because I'm looking up. There's always lights outside your house. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, there looks like stars, but they're moving around in weird, um, like weird directions. And I try to record it and he's showing us a recording. I really can't see it. I'm like, it's too grainy. And he's like, well, I just want to let you know, because my mom's a pastor and she doesn't refuse to talk to this about it, refuses to talk to me about it but I don't think it's bad. And it's funny because I had just finished reading a UFO of God. And I think that's a little bit more his, his, you know, there's still, I think there's people still having a hard time detaching from the traditional, um, like church ideologies, uh, secular religion. And so I gave it to him and I, next week he had a telescope outside his garage because he became a little bit like, I'm trying to figure this out. And I, I told him, I looked at my husband, like, you see, I'm not making this up. Like if we have a, our neighbor telling us he's standing outside our garage, looking at the sky after I just told you, and I'm not making this up. And, uh, he kind of only was, he, he kind of backed off. He was like, okay, you know, whatever makes you guys happy and support it. And I was like, no, <laughs> so that to me was this huge validation because for a long time, it's always just been me and my dad. And to have a, a person who we have no association to, except we coexist together. So then I had to ask him about, have you heard noises? He's like, no, mm -hmm. like our kids go to sleep by seven. And I'm like, yeah, okay. There's something going on here. So interesting things. I don't know how to explain those things. I just say, all right, something's just, I'm asking for a sign all the time. So I guess this is the way they're showing it, not the way that I want. 
Um, but yeah, the, uh, what I really want to see is like another day, like physical thing. And the closest thing I got to was, I think I sent it to Jimmy and he was like, oh, that's interesting. Where I was like, it all usually happens when I'm by myself, where I feel some energy and I'm always out in the trails by myself. And that was the one day I captured, like, I, I don't know what it was. I like to say that I thought it, it is what it was. It is what I, what I thought it was, but you know, just these things just disappearing in midair, just flying across the sky. And I'm like, no one is here to see this with me. Like I have no proof. The one time by myself, and I usually run with people because I'm afraid of running by myself in the trail just for, you know, safety issues. But that one day I was out there and I'm like, this is insane. It just happens like, ugh, you know, so just yeah, so it's strong. been a, it's cool. I had this conversation with um with Ezra Kelderman, who's a uh, project manager for for the Galileo project, and he his first sighting when I was talking to him, he'd he'd seen this thing doing like the figure of eight in the sky, and he wanted he was at like a, a bus stop or a bus station, he wanted to kind of run in and find somebody to just bring them out to see it with them because the stigma is that strong that somebody else has to see this, otherwise no one's going to believe me and everyone's going to think I'm crazy, and it's just it's so powerful yeah. this this stigma that's. It you is. Know, yeah, I don't, and I don't know where it comes from. I think I don't know because I mean I've, I've looked things up and it's it's it seems like it's something that's happened for for hundreds of years and maybe just people don't know how to describe it and you know a ton, kind of where I'm going I'm like I don't know read Genesis I'm gonna read that that's a crazy book if you ask me you're gonna believe that but then you think we're cuckoo for thinking about this stuff I don't know what's crazier I don't know it's kind of the same to me so. Uh, I think now I'm trying in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, the only way to help people feel more comfortable is to talk about it more. So what I've done is I develop a close friend list. So it's like 20 people who are kind of open-minded, who are like cool about it. And then there's people who totally believe it. And some people who I'm like trying to get, so I'll just post stuff and talk about things. And um, I think more people are just, I don't think people knew that about me because I come off, I mean, I'm pretty square. I'm like straight and narrow. Like I'm not, you know, I don't really, I mean, if you look at my Instagram page, just running stuff, like there's nothing that would make anyone think that I believe in that, anything like that. So when they hear me talk about it, they're like, oh, you don't look like the purple haired, <laughs> like not no offense to someone who has purple haired lady with the cat and like, the crystals and stuff you know and I'm like no I'm a pretty reasonable person I have been my whole life so if I speak on it and I'm very you know thorough with my thoughts and what I think the goal is just to have people be open to the idea and not ridicule it because I don't think that I think it's just time for people to just be open to that and accepting even if they don't really agree just be like oh, okay that's a possibility I don't know um, because it's kind of weird too, with all this, um, stuff that's going on with in the U S right now, I'm like, how is no one interested? This is insane to me. Like, how can you guys not be interested just in the idea that if this could be real and you, everyone's just m walking out on the street, like nothing. And I'm like, why do you no know what, no one, no one's blinking an eye. It's really unusual to me. Like, what? But pe there's more people who are like totally a fan of Bigfoot. And I'm like, what? How? how? I don't get it. Maybe Bigfoot's real. But right now I'm talking about you, the UAP stuff with the government and you have, you know, highly intelligent military people, you know, disclosing information and there's just not a peep about it. I just don't get it. So that to me just tells me a lot. Like just people are just not vested in it or interested and or not interested enough or just have their own thought processes about it or people are just really still concerned about saying that's real you know hmm. so why do you think then given that sort of congress are talking about flying saucers and then it's it's on fox news now why do you think people are still so hesitant to talk about things like meditation and consciousness and sort of spirit and that sort of thing I don't know. I think about this. I, I'm not kidding. I think about this every day. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it really bothers me that we're still in this state of mind. It's almost like worse to be, be honest. 
Like people are so, I feel people, everyone's lost. They just know, it's just focused on the wrong things and everything's just but superficial. I don't think people, I think people have even turned away from secular religion. So most people just don't believe in anything. And I think before I'd be like, you know, people are really religious, you know, they have their own belief system, which goes against, this would go against all of that, right? I just think now people are like, not about anything. Um, I don't really know the answer to that because it it still, it confuses me um, why it's still in this, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But I also do think that because of technology and the ability to share, like I know way more people now who think the same thing. And so, whereas before I'd be like, I don't know anybody, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like I can go down the rabbit hole on that like five ways already. And just like, mm, people need need to believe in something. They don't believe in anything. The US government don't believe anything the US government says first and foremost. And, you know, they've just been so deceitful throughout history and they're going to continue to do that. Um, Cause I think it just comes down to, uh, power and greed and that's what it is i mean i just don't i can't understand why they would keep it so secretive when time and time again like there's more disclosure it's more proof there's more proof than ever and it's just like no we're just kidding i'm like what do you mean you're just kidding you just said last year that there was some stuff going on what are you talking about so i don't know what the what what that means i mean I'm sure you guys have read a lot of literature on this. So I have many like hypotheses mm-hmm. of why, you know, powerful people don't want to talk about this. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's there, but- fools, isn't it? I mean, I I, I think I, I put a video out today, which was an old one from John Rat- Radcliffe or Ratcliffe, I think it is, former um, national intelligence National Defense, National Intelligence Director, National Intelligence Director, that's it. But he, he not that long ago, he was saying, oh, this isn't debris, this isn't birds, this isn't a, some sort of phenomenon, you know, environmental phenomenon. The, the, this is this is a real thing that appears to defy physics. All of these kind of comments. And then Arrow come out and say, this is all debris and misidentified planes. And then Kirkpatrick in a previous uh, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick from from Arrow, uh, previous director, came out not that long ago to say, I'm not saying this is aliens, but, you know, we need to be concerned because potentially if it's not foreign adversaries, it's something in our back gardens. And then the report comes out. It's kind of we're bouncing backwards and forwards from the same people. It's not even necessarily different people. It's the same people saying this is something to this isn't anything. Well, which, which is it? We've got so many people in the intelligence community in the military and the air force etc who are saying this is this is a thing you know you can't really wind that back you know you can't say we've changed their minds it's um it, i don't it almost feels as if it's some kind of plan or some sort of game sort of some sort of kind of chess game i mean that's yeah. what it feels to me anyway i think that too i think about it all the time and i'm like why are they backtracking on what they're talking about but i kind of it's interesting because i feel like there there was an attempt to make pe- people feel very concerned about the phenomenon I and mean, like security reasons you know this might be really dangerous and i'm like i'm pretty sure the only dangerous people here are us i don't think it's these other things like you guys want to nuke each other out and you know the next year or two what are you talking about i mean i don't know i think i think i think there's something there's obviously something more sinister about it maybe maybe that's not the word there's there's something deeper here at play that someone's trying to hide something because it doesn't make any sense to me at this point like what do you we you can't hide it anymore so you either don't want to spit it out because you're concerned that it's going to change or shift something or people are just assuming that it's going to you know vastly change life and I'm like but will it really I don't think so if people found out like what what what's the worst that could happen People are going to have like an aha moment, like, oh, you guys, we all should probably consider why we're working so hard. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if someone told me like, hey, you know, 
uh, there's life out maybe, I don't know, whatever, there's different life or we're living in this weird dimension. And I'd be like, you know, it's still cool. I probably should follow my own passions and really do what I want to do instead of wasting my time trying to do this. I don't know. I feel like that would be the worst that would happen. You know, I'd give everyone so much clarity and maybe they don't want people to have clarity and direction um, and just keep it so chaotic and, you know, not let people really understand what, what this life is really about. And they just want to keep people tied down to, I don't know, working, hustling, not, you know, enjoying life and keeping you low level. Uh, I'll call it low level humanistic in terms of just being mean, angry, evil, instead of being kind, empathetic and open minded. And I feel like that would be the worst thing that would happen to powerful people be like, we don't want that. We want to keep people down. I don't know. See, sounds crazy. But that's my theory. I'm like, I don't know. So <laughs> that makes perfect After, sense. Yeah. So yeah, but I I I do find it very interesting. I get really frustrated, so I don't even you know talk about it. And I'm like, wow, I wonder if uh there were more if more people read about the topic. And I think that's the problem is that there are so there's so much information. But I'm talking. I've gone through hours, countless weeks of hours of listening to audiobooks. I'm like, who's going to listen to a 12 hour book about the topic, you know, and you, there, you get a lot of revelation, you know, incredible things that you learn. You can take the smallest thing from the one book. That's still a positive thing. And you're like, no one's listening to this stuff. <laughs> it's just us people who are super passionate about it. And we're like totally in another zone. We're like, yep, we're thriving. You guys need to come along. Come on, come with me. It's great up here. I promise. And no one wants to join. I, I feel crazy in that sense that I want. It's almost like, now that I know a little bit more about what is important in life, which is really that simple, I'm trying to get everyone with me. Like, listen, it's positive. You want to be up here. It's great. And no, no one wants to join the party. So uh, it's really sad. I know. I think it, if anything, I think that I thought the UAP uh, minor interest, not minor, minor obsession and huge interest I have would lead me more to science and it has, but it's kind of driven me this whole other path, which has really kind of improved my, the quality of my whole life in a weird way. Um, not in a weird way, in an awesome way, really. Um, and you know, I, I think it resembles a lot of like Buddhism stuff and I'm like, oh, the Buddhists were onto something a long time ago. They knew about this. Hinduism, they knew about this. And, you know, um, the monolithic, monolithic religions are the ones who are just kind of like, they're just not jumping on board right now. I'm like, you guys need to change it up a little bit. Um, so that's where I'm at. See, it's a weird concoction of things and involves a hundred different things in this one topic. But I tell people now because the common thing that I'll get is like, oh, do you see great alien? I'm like, people who say great alien are like low level, don't understand what's what this is about actually so when i hear that i'm like you actually don't know what you're talking about because it's not just that so that's how i know i'm like yeah you have no idea mm -hmm. i think you're absolutely you make a great point like even diana pazulka because she she started as hardcore sort of catholic and and as a firm skeptic and it was only as she went on that journey and had a sort of ontological shock and um, in her interview with Jesse Michaels on uh, American Alchemy, um, they described the phenomena as like a forcing function and that it literally like tends to pick you up and throw you out of your life onto this whole other path. And then you tend to sort of straighten up and lots of people stop drinking and that kind of thing. And they see the world in a totally different way. So I think you're not alone in, in what you're going through, but it's, it seems a very personal thing, don't, don't, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's true. I actually stopped drinking. I've been sober for, and not that I drink a lot. I was just like, oh, I, want, I don't drink. I used to, um, so uh, uh, marijuana is legal in most of the states in, in the United States. So I used to, you know, have an edible before I went to sleep because I thought deep sleep would help me dream. That's always what I've been chasing is like chasing this. And once I stopped, it's like, I don't, I'm not on any, any type of enhancer or drug. And it's when I'm most in tune with everything. And, you know, I'm like drinking water, going to sleep early. I'm just like, I feel like, I'm walking like on clouds. I'm like, this is crazy. How come no one else has seen this? Like, you know, and yeah, I don't know. I, I think it changes. It just changes your perspective on a lot of things. And I think that's what it's done for me. And that I loved, yeah, I listened to a lot of 
uh, Daniela Pazolka's uh, interviews and that's what I got out of it. And I'm like, wow, you were a hardcore Catholic girl. You said it in your first book, you know, and I've read her three books. So a uh, big, big fan of her work. So I thought it was really interesting when she was talking about it. And she said she started having experiences as well during her research. And I thought, mm hmm. I know what that feeling's like. You kind of don't understand. You question it. You try to make you try to make reason uh, about what's going on. Like, oh, it's uh, maybe I just you know I slept wrong and I was in a different place. Um, but you know, uh, no, it 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 just kind of is how that works. It's really I feel like I said it. It's kind of poking fun at you a little bit. The phenomenon like where you kind of know and it's just giving you little. It dabbles the carrot in front of you, but it won't necessarily give you the carrot. And um, yeah, so it's been uh, really interesting. So hopefully I don't, you know, I don't think I'll lose the path now because I feel like very firm and where I'm at. And I'm just as long I feel like as long as we stay curious and open minded and positive about the whole thing, uh, I think more things slowly reveal themselves to a person and yeah I'm kind of taking it in and enjoying the ride and I'm trying to take more people with me on this ride um so hopefully more people join on the join the train here and the, come along and tag along and we get to vibe and talk about it uh because there isn't a lot of people out here to I know there's a big convention coming coming up so people are going to be there maybe I'll go there I don't know see I'm still a little mm, I don't know I want to join the whole 200 people in there. Like, I don't know where I found everybody's vibe. So, uh, so cautiously walking, um, because it's still fairly new to me. Um, and I'm trying to digest everything on my own. And, um, but I think maybe, maybe one day I'll go to one of these big conventions that everyone goes to. I, don't <laughs> I get a little nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's understandable. I think it's, I think of, of anywhere in the world where you can, you can speak to like-minded people, that's definitely going to be one of those kind of places. So I think it'd be fascinating to, um, to, to be there. We, we, me and Tom were talking about this, um, recently, uh, we'd both like to go very much, but obviously we're a million, million yeah. miles. Oh, it is far. Yeah, it is far. And I did, I forgot who, what book I was reading, but there was a gentleman who's also, I think, it might have been in Danielle Pazolka's uh, last book where there was a gentleman who experienced, like had a very, very deep experience at a convention. And I thought, oh, I, who was it? Um, it was some gentleman who had gone to a convention and he saw a person, but the person was not a person and had a full on conversation with this person. And I thought, what? There's like a like an energy person at the convention talking to you? like a person who's not a person that's still like borderline like wait I don't maybe I should go maybe I'll meet somebody that I've been wanting to meet this whole time <laughs> so, you mentioned, yeah. uh, mentioned the, the the sort of validation word earlier on which is an interesting uh, an interesting word and uh, quite a few people that I've spoken with um there's been this kind of this feeling that I I know there's something else uh, and perhaps a lot of other people haven't quite got there yet. And then throughout your kind of your, your life and uh, and the more that you talk about the subject, people kind of some people kind of think there's something not quite right about you or, you know, think you're crazy or whatever. And so it's the question of um, disclosure and would disclosure bring about some kind of validation? Do, do some people say, or some people have said, look, I, I know, I know what it, what I saw or what exists um, to, to some extent. So I don't really need it. I've already had disclosure. What, what's your kind of feeling on the whole disclosure thing? Firstly, do you think we're going to get it officially? Um, and, and would it, would it bring you some kind of sense of validation? Do you think? I think uh, to answer one of your questions right now, there's so much chaos in the U S political realm. I don't think we're going to get the answers that a lot of us think or we're hoping to get. Um, I think that we're really lucky to have people who are pushing for, you know, uh, peacefulness from our government. I think that's really good. I don't think we've ever had that before. Um, so I don't, I think, 
a year ago, had you asked me, I would have said, yes, I would validate everything that I believe. And I think now it's more, I know what I believe and I want other people to believe it. I think it's more validation for everybody else. Like you guys don't, obviously don't believe us. We've talked about it for many, many years. There's, there's enough literature and facts to prove it to you, but you don't believe it. You need uh, some governmental, some government um, party as association to tell you that it exists for people to believe it. So I think for myself, I don't need them to tell me it's, I don't, first of all, I don't really believe a lot of stuff that they put out anyways. Um, so I definitely don't need them to tell me that it's real or not. But I think for there to be a monumental shift in the culture of society, I think that's what needs to happen um, for people to be more accepting of it, you know? Um, so I think there's a lot of, there's, I mean, there's hundreds of people who are just so, you know, anti this realm. Um, but if the government is saying it's true, you'd be surprised how easily that could switch people's minds. So yeah, I think personally, I'm like, well, no, but for you, if you need proof, the government said it's proof. Look, you know, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that whole thing. But no, they've been uh, U.S. government. I don't know what what's going on. And you have hundreds of people um, who are who are really working on this, and also a lot of other U.S. government officials and members of the cabinet on both Republican and Democratic sides who are going, "Hey, we need some more." Listen, I'm like, why can't you guys just say it? What's the worst thing that can happen? I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's got to be something else. Uh, involved with that and the secrecy and maybe it's good that more more of these people do know and it's going to kind of leak out a little bit because how can you um, control more and more people knowing about it I think it's harder to do that now more than ever so I think it's a, it's going to happen I just don't think it's going to happen soon yeah yeah I think you're probably spot on. Sadly, I think you're probably you're probably right. It's um it's a, it's likely to be a slow process. I mean, we, we were talking about this in the forties, fifties, and God knows when. You know, prior to that, that you know. No, and I'm like, you have other countries. I think what is it, Peru, who has a like an official government UAP group that that is it Peru? It's one of those countries. They, I mean, so many other countries are very, very open about it. Um, so I don't understand. I don't know. It's, it's really, really odd. It's, it, it's very odd. So unless they're, I don't know, maybe watch them be like secretly working with them already. And they're like, we can't tell you guys. That's why we can't say anything. That would be my other guess. I'm like, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Actually, I doubt it because these people are not good people. <laughs> the US government is so shady. So I don't think so. But yeah, I don't know. I think you guys, you guys who are super invested and in the 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 field are probably going to know way more than anybody else. You know, you guys get sent stuff. You guys talk to all these people. You guys know more than anybody. So I think having having people um, be invested into the topic is probably what's going to end up breaking um, the book wide open one day is all you guys in one room brainstorming together, bring things up. And just putting it out there is probably what's changed really a uh, modern day um, shift, I think. So props to you guys for being really invested into this. Listen, I told my husband, he's like, what you do? I'm like, one day I'm going to be in the circle and I'm going to help investigate this. And he's like, are you serious? And I'm like, 100%. <laughs> so, so keep on the good work because I, I think it's really important, you know, um, and yeah, and that's going to change the world in a positive way one day, I think, for sure. I think that, I mean, you, you know, you you are in the circle already. I think ultimately when people when people see this and and they will you know we, we I'm not going to sort of make out I've got millions of uh, you know people that follow follow us on on here but there will be lots of people that see this and see that you are a really credible person and hang on a minute I've had a similar experience they're prepared to talk about it these weird British guys are prepared to talk about it as well and actually the more they talk the more it kind of makes sense and and I can associate with it and I think that's that's you know our, our small part to to play, and it, it helps main you know turn the subject into a slightly more mainstream. And as we go on, and I think since twenty seventeen, it's it's just changed. 
you know and we're still still that stigma but it's it's totally different from prior to 2017 I think in in my opinion I will say you have one of the most powerful podcasters following you so I looked at your thing and I was like Joe Rogan is following okay uh in the United States he is you know creme de la creme up top notch person so uh yeah no that what what I'm saying is people do listen to you and people do follow you and thank God for YouTube because now we get to and and Spotify and Apple iTunes because there's just so you could you could binge watch all this stuff and it might be enough for someone to be like hmm I think these people are onto something so yeah I mean I know I'm, I was kind of nervous going on here and I was like you know what I think it's I think it's time for me to talk about it um, and you know if I don't you know it's not. I'm not helping what I think is important um, and the cause and, you know, just expanding the possibilities. And, you know, most people who believe in this are, you know, very reasonable people and we don't fit the box of, you know, you're, like I said before, like you have mental issues or, you know, bipolar disorder, whatever, whatever people want to categorize other people as. Um, And yeah. And, and it's all, People walks of life. I mean, you could go to a, a whole different country and you'll probably find, you know, a few people who have experienced this. So yeah, I am really happy to kind of be doing this. And uh, so thanks for uh, letting me talk about it and, <laughs> and nerd out with you guys. I could talk about this forever. Um, yeah, I have, I don't know. I could probably pull out my library now, my whole shelf of like, this is a uh, my genre right here it's right here so if you guys have any recs send them my way also i'm more than open to uh read all the things and yeah so thank you guys you guys are awesome well, Jesse, thank you you know absolute pleasure i really appreciate you um taking the time to talk to us and and hopefully we'll talk again in the future and certainly stay in touch yes absolutely <laughs> Thank you.